This is the BBC World Service, the world radio station. This is Alex Watson with the newsroom. The official death toll in the Hawaii wildfires rises to 89, making it the deadliest U.S. blaze in a century. And the expectation is that much worse news is to come. The devastation is so complete that you see metal twisted in ways that you can't imagine. And you see nothing of an organic structures left whatsoever. The latest drownings of migrants in the sea between England and France adds the pressure on the British government. The doctor of Niger says the president is allowed to visit the captive former leader and says he is in good spirit. There's 60,000 Asian elephants left in the world, according to wildlife campaign. And on display in New York. of founding father of jazz, Lewis, or Louis Armstrong. First, this news. Hello, I'm Chris Barrow with the BBC News. Wildfires on the Hawaiian island of Maui have become the deadliest to hit the United States in more than a century. At least 89 people are now known to have been killed. The governor of Hawaii, Josh Green, warned that the figure would continue to rise. The fires have all but destroyed the town of Lahaina. Speaking to reporters in Maui, the governor ended his remarks with this. This is the largest natural disaster we've ever experienced. It's going to also be a natural disaster that's going to take an incredible amount of time to recover from. So in the next few days, as we characterize how many people we've lost, and how many people are coming into our community, please understand it's going to be, in the short term, heartbreaking. In the long term, people are going to need mental health care services. In the very long term, we'll be both together. The authorities in Ecuador have carried out a huge operation to move a gang leader accused of threatening the murdered presidential candidate Fernando Diaz Vicencio to a maximum security jail. Here's Penny McGuire. Jose Adolfo Macias, known as Pito, is the head of the powerful Los Chimeras criminal group and controlled at least one cell block in the prison in which he was being held. About 4,000 soldiers and police took part in the operation to transfer him. Mr. Pio said he had received death threats from the gang leader a week before his assassination at the rally on Wednesday. The politician had campaigned against corruption and organized crime as Ecuador deals with spiraling violence triggered by gangs with ties to rival drug cartels in Mexico. His party had put forward his running mate, Andrea Gonzalez, to stand in this month's presidential election. The Taliban say Afghan universities are ready to readmit women, but the final decision is up to the group's supreme leader. The hardline Islamists banned female students from campuses last year. Rory Gallimore reports. Women in Afghanistan haven't been allowed to return to class since December. The ban prompted international condemnation, angry protests, and despair from the students themselves. But it's becoming clear that the Taliban are far from united and whether the measure should be temporary. In an interview with the Associated Press, the Taliban education advisor said many senior officials were in favor of reversing the decision, but he said it was entirely up to their leader, Ibatullah Akhundzada, when or if that should happen. The vice president of Taiwan has arrived in New York for a visit that's been condemned by China. William Lai is then making a brief stopover on his way to Paraguay. The Taiwanese official saw Beijing will use the trip as a pretext for stepping up military drills around the island. China regards Taiwan as its own territory and reacts angrily to any meeting between Taiwanese and US officials. The Lai is a prominent independent supporter. This is the world news from the BBC. The British government is coming under renewed pressure to stop migrants crossing the sea from France in small boats after six people drowned in the channel. Opposition parties and campaigners have called for urgent action. The French authorities say all the victims of Saturday's disaster were Afghan men. Nearly 60 other people were rescued from the water. The rail has announced it will once again intercept drug trafficking planes that fly out its airspace. Under a new deal with the United States, the Peruvian Air Force will receive training and equipment so it can better monitor its sky. Peru's Prime Minister, Alberto Otterola, said his country would act without hesitation to accept the claims of gangs and cartels. But the Defence Minister stressed the importance of doing so using non-lethal means. 
The American football player Damar Hamlin has returned to action for the first time since suffering a cardiac arrest during the match. Hamlin collapsed after making a tackle in January and had to be resuscitated on the pitch. Seven months later, he's taken part in a pre-season game for the Buffalo Bills. Hamlin made three tackles which were met with loud cheers from the crowd. The British heavyweight boxer Anthony Joshua has won a crucial fight in London. He knocked out his Finnish opponent, Robert Hellier, in the seventh round. The win helped revitalise his career, as Adid Adedoin reports. Many had predicted an early knockout in this fight, but it was a very sensitive start from Joshua. The 33-year-old looked a little nervous, perhaps because so much was at stake. He was paid by the crowd in the early round. Joshua did land some solid punches, but wouldn't commit to applying sustained pressure on Hellenia. But after a largely lethargic performance, the finish was spectacular. A thunderous right hand in the seventh round meant that Hellenius was out for the count before he hit the canvas. The win should now fall away for a blockbuster fight with the American Deontay Wilder in January next year. BBC News. Hello, this is Alex Rickson with the Mutual. Of the wildfires on the Hawaiian island of Maui are brought under control. The scale of devastation they caused has become clearer. The number of fatalities continues to rise, and now 89 people are known to have died. It officially makes the wildfires the deadliest to hit the United States in more than a century. Search and rescue teams in Hawaii have been coming to the charred remains of homes. The historic town of Lahina in Maui has been utterly devastated and officials estimate the rebuilding will take many years and cost billions of dollars. The governor of Hawaii, Josh Green, gave this assessment of the fire damage. In West Maui, 2,200 structures have been destroyed or damaged. 86% are residential. In Kula, 544 structures have been exposed and 96% the losses approach six billion dollars in essence. Ahead of the Federal Emergency Management Agency for Response and Recovery, FEMA, the Crystal outlined the coordinating efforts that were being put into place. We already have 150 people on the ground. There will be more coming. We have more search and rescue teams with more guards that are going to be here over the next day or two. Uh, but we can't do this alone. <laughs> we also bring in all of our federal partners, the Small Business Administration, the Army Corps of Engineers, the U.S. Fire Administrator, the Department of Defense, the Coast Guard, and we will continue to bring in all of our federal partners as we better understand what's going to be needed to go through this recovery process. Our reporter, Lena Humphrey, is in Maui, and she gave me more details about how people are coping. We've seen more and more search, rescue and recovery teams coming in today, also from the US mainland, because there are just so many people who are still unaccounted for. Uh, right now where I am, I'm at an emergency shelter here on Maui. It's already at capacity, and one of the really poignant things is, is that there is a missing person text, so essentially people can tell if they haven't been able to get in touch with their loved ones because of the problems with the cell phone service here right now. They can go, they can put a description in, filling out a police form, which is then added to the sheriff, and then at the end of the day, they can check back with a QR code to see if there is any update. But it certainly is a very grim task. And at moments here at this emergency shelter, you certainly see people from the community bump into each other. They've been searching for each other. They hug each other. They embrace, and many, many times you can see them break down. They say, I didn't expect to see you here. I didn't know that I was going to find you here. But of course, in other cases, it is the worst news imaginable. And we now know that there are cadaver dogs um, which have been brought in to go through the rubble, particularly in Lahaina, which is so hard hit. What aid is needed and what aid is coming in? I mean, the needs here are just enormous. It is an emergency shelter. People need everything from food to water to hygiene kits to supplies for babies. This shelter is already at capacity and people who've been coming in from Lahaina who I've been speaking to are telling me that they are sleeping out in the open with other families and people's backyards. They've lost everything and now they're out in the open and it is very warm here right now. Um, it is very windy. It's really everything. Also cell phone access, internet access, so they can start to, if they can, get in touch with loved ones. We know that female authorities today have released an estimate saying that a point line are alone, we're talking 5.5 billion 
you went by those that are called, you know, that line or those yeah. nestle tapes. We're also seeing uh, Chinook from uh, the Federal Guard and from uh, the US military also being deployed to drop water where they can, but also to, to raise the rubble so that people can go about that grim, grim task of understanding how many people have really passed in what is six states worst natural disaster ever. Eleanor Humphrey in Nauru.